Okay, guys, we got a 2009 Toyota Corolla. Um, we got the tire light. TPMS light comes on and goes. Um, I tried to fill up the air in all the tires. Customer light goes away. That means it's an issue, but the customer still wants me to check the sensors. So what I did was I put 09 in here. So let's go back. Uh, so I'm sorry, this is a 2010 Toyota Corolla. So I, I selected a Corolla there and then uh, 2010. And what we're gonna do is scan. We're gonna scan the sensors. So we're gonna press enter. But we gotta be close to the sensor so you can pick up. So where is the sensor? It's the wall here. So you see that immediately picked up. We're gonna test one more time right here. There you go. So it's giving us 29 PSI and the battery is okay. Uh, it tells you everything about the sensor. That's the ID 4D054B4. So we're gonna go to the next one. So uh, we're gonna look for anything that has a low, it says battery, if it says low or battery bad, or if it's not reading anything at all. So this one, it says battery okay, 34 PSI. So the pressure is different. Uh, we're gonna get another sensor if it has any sensor that's not picking up. Oh, that's somebody's brakes outside. Anyways, this one is okay. So far looking good. Uh, pressure's uneven. And then, uh, this last one here. So I went around the whole vehicle. So this one is low, okay? Battery's low. So we're gonna recommend her a sensor and, and the pressure's low. So we're gonna check the leaks in the tire, which is a different story, and we're gonna recommend a sensor. So if you got a Toyota Corolla, all you need to do is buy one of these sensors. So a lot of people ask me, can they bring a sensor? I'll tell them no, because it's gotta be compatible with my machine here. So I got a lot of videos on how to do the sensors. So this vehicle, we just figured out how to fix this issue. So we got one of the sensors. So what you would do is you would put that ID, you see the ID right there, 4D90, 4B4, that's the ID for the sensor. You will program this to, to this machine, put the sensor in and hit program. It will program the same ID for you. And all you do is uh, put in the sensor. Anyways, guys, um, if you guys have issues with Toyota Corolla like this, just uh, check that out. Anyways, I'm gonna let the customer know if you had to order a sensor and they might be coming back, but let's see what happens. So the customer agreed to uh, put a new sensor on this Toyota Corolla. So we're gonna install the sensor. So let, this frequency is 315. Uh, if you want this machine, get this machine and there's a part number for this. So it's all up to you. It's like a, it's like almost like a $400 machine and gives you a couple of sensors too when I originally bought this. So this thing just plugs straight up in here. So what we wanna do here is, since the sensor is working, it's low on power. All we need to do is to copy the sensor but we're gonna stand more towards this side because remember the sensor is on that side. So this is a Toyota Corolla 2010 model. We're gonna replace that sensor and this is the sensor for this baby. So anyways, uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go again. We're gonna, we're gonna go, we don't have to go through the whole vehicle. We got this vehicle in there already. So we're gonna copy a sensor. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the sensor you could input an id or you can just copy the sensor so there you go so there's the id for that uh if that sensor did not work i would have taken it off and on the sensor you would have that id anyways we're gonna put this in here and we're gonna close that up and we're gonna program a sensor okay there you go Program in cradle, okay, so it's in cradle. So I am able to program these sensors. I wanna stay a little bit further. So in cradle, erasing, flashing, programming a sensor. That's how simple that is. Okay, to program a sensor. Verifying a sensor. So there you go. Successfully, the ID is given that sensor We'll look at the sensor once I take the wheel off and put it on the wheel. Now we need to take that wheel off and put it onto the wheel. Okay, so here's our uh, 
I broke the bead on this wheel here. So what we're gonna do here is very simple, 11 millimeter. You're gonna go grab from the bottom and make sure you don't drop it in there. And you're gonna remove the sensor. Sometimes these walls can get jammed. So you're gonna have very difficulty just trying to get this guy off. So here we are, we got this baby off and we don't wanna drop the sensor down below. So you wanna be careful there. That's the part that's gonna to be tough. Okay, and it's gonna be super tough on this, especially this rim. I don't know why I didn't do that. I should have done that to begin with. And the old one I don't care about, but the new one you gotta be really careful with. So make sure the area, the surface is clean inside and out. So this is a metal rim. Usually they don't go mess up that easy. I'm gonna get the new sensor, okay? So here's our new sensor for this Corolla. And so it has, it has few pieces. So I got plastic and a metal right there. So we're gonna keep everything in order. So make sure it's nice and clean. This one is pretty good. Customer took care of their car. Probably washed it every snow. So now we need to go back inside here. So this wheel is gonna give us a little bit of difficulty because the angle is in. So remember that rubber seal has to sit flush and good. And what we're gonna do here is, we're gonna put that plastic looking one in the bottom and then the metal one on the top. And then we're gonna put the little screw that it comes with. So you don't wanna just turn your wrench and you do wanna hold it from the bottom, okay? And you wanna snug this sensor in. If you got the torque specs and you have a torque wrench, you wanna just tighten it according to that. But I usually do it by hand and I'm good to go. One more thing is, once you're done with this, make sure you spray some um, uh, a flat fixer, checker, liquid, soapy water, and there's no leaks on this guy, okay? So we're done here, guys. So we're gonna put this back on the car. And here's our old sensor. I like to dispose of old sensors. I don't want nothing to do with them. Because sometimes a car comes in, they picks up the frequency, and then you have a light and you're confused, okay? But we are gonna confirm it. But there's an ID here, 4D94B4, okay? That's the ID I was talking about, okay? So if, you, if the sensor was completely dead, I would have taken that and put it in the manually. Anyways, let's get this job going. Once I'm done, we'll show you once we complete it. Okay, so we have completed the job. There's our new sensor in this baby. Uh, check that, you see it's like a liquid, it's water sprayed around it. So you gotta check your sensor so it doesn't leak, okay? Sometimes you install a new sensor, it's dirty or uh, it didn't work out. So once you start the car up now, make sure pressure is equal in all four tires, 35 PSI. You wanna start the car, the light might be on, but it will go away, go for a spin around the block. Well, let's see what happens here. So no need to reset nothing, it goes away on its own. So I would recommend you take this car for a drive and uh, the light should stay off. But do check pressure in all four of your tires and that is the only way you guys gonna confirm uh, that uh, sensor has uh, been uh, so the light came back on. It might be because the other sensor sitting around, but let's take it for a spin. Okay, so the light is coming on and off because you're close to the shop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it for a spin and we're gonna get away from the shop and the light should go away. There you go. It has immediately gone away as soon as I left the shop. Thank you for watching my video, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. So the light is off and it stays off. So it's gonna probably pick back up as soon as I get by the shop. Other than that, you're good. Dispose that sensor so you won't have that issue of a confusion anymore. Thank you and bye-bye.